So I took the liberty of drawing up a simplified circuit so we can talk about what's actually going on in a Geiger-Muller circuit. What we do is we have this whole area on the left going into our GM tube, which is actually our voltage booster. And the way this works is we have five volts coming from our Raspberry Pi that goes through this inductor, which is just a big coil of wire. Now, it's normally going through here because this is powered by our PWM circuit, and this is just basically a switch. When it's turned on, it allows electricity to flow through here and flow right to ground. And so our 5 volt goes through our inductor, goes to ground, and is very happy. However, when we turn this off, that means that no electricity can flow. And so we lose current. So because of our resistance going way up, our current is going down, but it's not going down fast enough, and the inductor really doesn't like change. And because the inductor really doesn't like change, what it will actually do is adjust the voltage based on magnetic fields to try and keep itself at an equilibrium. And so when it adjusts the voltage, it will spike the voltage, and because it can't go this direction anymore, it takes the next best path and goes through this diode. Now this diode just acts as a one-way valve. It means once we send electricity over, it can't come back, and that's all it does. So we send it over this diode and it gets stuck in this capacitor. And so capacitor 1C1 acts just like a big battery. And all it does is hold all this extra charge from when our inductor spiked the voltage because it was mad at us. Now the key to keeping a high charge here and getting a high charge here is to switch this switch on and off as fast as possible. So what we do is we use pin 12 on our Raspberry Pi, which is actually the pulse width modulation pin. And what it does is it creates a square wave, so it just basically goes from 0 volts to 3.3 volts and back to 0 volts as fast as it can. About 1000 hertz is what we have it set to do. And so it just switches this about 1000 times a second so that we can create that voltage up here on our capacitor because our Geiger tube needs a high voltage. So. I'm sure you all know how Geiger-Muller tubes work, so we'll say that we've got a click. A bit of ionizing radiation has come through the tube and created an electrical charge. So we now have the electrical charge go through a resistor and a capacitor. These are our low-pass filter. Basically, all it does is it slows our electrical charge down, and it acts as kind of a buffer with this capacitor so that we can chop off that top section so that it's not too powerful going into our second switch, which is T2 here. So now we're going into this second section, which is the section on the left. This is our inverter. Now in our inverter, we have 3.3 volts coming from the board, and it's always going into our measurement pin through resistor R2. Now what happens every time we get a click is that this switch switches so that the electricity that's going into R2, that's going into our measurement pin through R2, can actually go right into ground without a resistor. And because electricity take, likes to take the path of least resistance, it'll go straight to ground every time that we get an electrical charge. This allows us to create a voltage drop and spike back up to 3.3 volts on our measurement pin. And our measurement pin just reads every time that we get an increase in electricity. And so every time this goes down, when it comes back up, we read it as a count. And that's really the basics of how this system works. All of this is just to get us about 350 to 400 volts. It goes through our tube. When our tube gets a click, we soften it out so our transistor doesn't get blown up. Then our transistor will just switch on and allow the electricity to flow from our measurement pin, instead going straight to ground, allowing our measurement pin to see that it's lost voltage, gain voltage back again, and count a click.